Hello, John Talley here with Boats.net. Today I'm going to walk you through the process of breaking down the lower unit on our 2004 Yamaha F225. As you can see in a previous video, the whole motor's in pretty bad shape, so I don't know what we're going to run into here. I do need to walk over to the table and show you all the special tools we're going to need to get this unit completely pulled down so we can inspect it. So let's head over to the table, take a look, and then we can get started. Now normally I would have all these new parts laid out that we're going to install. Well, this video is just about breaking down the unit and analyzing to see what we can use and what we're going to have to replace. There are, however, several special tools that we're going to need to get in order to pull this off. First, you're going to need a bearing driver set and you need to make sure that one of the driving heads is a 40 millimeter. Next, you're going to need a special puller to pull the input shaft housing. And for that, we went to Marine Tech, and they have a very nice unit that works really well in this particular lower unit. Next, also need to be able to pull the output shaft housing. For that, once again, we went to Marine Tech. Really nice, heavy-duty industrial unit. Now, the next one is pretty easy to pick up. You just want to get a slide hammer set. The only thing you want to make sure of is that it has a couple of claws that you can orient into a 180-degree fashion. So, now that we have our special tools, let's go over there and start pulling this thing apart. Step one, after you've removed the drive from the uh, unit, is to, of course, drain the fluid out of it. This one's already been drained. And just to give you another preview of what we have coming, this is the drain bolt. It has a magnetic tip, and it looks furry, to say the least. So, this one's already been drained, so let's keep going. As with anything, it's easier to take it apart than to put it together. My advice as you're doing this is to lay it out on the table as it comes apart in the same order as if you were looking at a parts diagram. That way it makes it a little bit easier to get it back together. Because if you're like me, I can remember some information you know, within a couple of days, but if I have to order parts and a week goes by, I'm not going to remember how that went together. So it's easier to have the old stuff laid out instead of just piled up in one big pile. The other trick I do is, I don't know if you can see back there, I've got towels laid out. That's where I kind of group each section together. Now, if you ordered that special tool that they use to pull the housing out, it also comes with this, which is kind of cool, because you can reach in and actually pop up this uh, little collar that's holding that nylon piece down. Now, if you don't have one of those, what I us usually do is just put a socket on either side and just use a screwdriver to gently pry it up on either side until it finally frees up. But since we have this tool, let's go ahead and use it. That made it pretty easy, huh? Now this plastic collar, it's actually split, so you just want to pull it apart just a tick, and then it'll come up. And below it, you're going to see three washers. There's going to be a flat one, and then a wavy one, and that's followed by another flat one. So you want to make sure you keep those together as it comes off. Now we can bring off our water pump. Let's get under the edge and lift her up. Remove the key. Hopefully yours won't be as, as difficult as that one. Now we can lift off that lower plate as well as the gasket. Next, let's go ahead and get that upper bearing housing and seals out. That special tool that I'm going to use to do that works very well. I want to caution you though, this one hasn't been in there long. And if yours has been in there for a while and it's been corroded, before you use that special tool, you want to go ahead and break it loose with a, uh, I don't want to use a chisel, but you want to use something to break it loose with a hammer just to get it to rotate just a little bit, just to break that seal loose. And once you do that, the tool shouldn't have a problem going ahead and pulling it out. If you don't, you run the risk of those fingers coming up and shearing off the bottom part of here and making an edge instead of grabbing. Now 
Now make sure yours is already broken loose. And once it is, go ahead and use the special tool to go ahead and pull that housing up and out. Like I said, when things have already been disassembled once, it makes it really easy. So at this point, let's pause on the input shaft and go ahead and pull our prop shaft. So let's start by getting this outer ring off, just a couple of 12 millimeters. Then under that, we'll have a couple more 12s, get those out, and then we'll be able to put on our puller and pop that prop shaft housing out. At that point, you will really be able to see just how ugly it is on the inside of this drive. Once you get the trim off, then there's only a couple of 10 millimeters under that actually bolting the uh, prop shaft housing in. So this should slide out without much effort. Like I said, a lot easier when they've already been pulled apart and put back together once. But now you can see the gravity of our situation here. It's not completely frozen up, but that should turn very smoothly. And it's in serious trouble. So next, let's go ahead and finish breaking it down, get the shift shaft out of the way, remove that, that nut for the input shaft, then we'll get the rest of the gears out. Let's get that shift shaft out of there. careful when you're prying these up. It is just plastic. It's easy to snap these. And don't grab it too hard with these. And mar it up, otherwise she'll not be able to be reused. There we go. Another indicator. I'm pretty sure it did not look like that when it was assembled at the factory. So with our shift shaft out, let's go ahead and get our prop shaft pulled through. So, so far, I think we'll be, we will be able to just replace the bearings in here, get all this cleaned up, and get it sealed back up. But I won't be able to make that final determination until I get all of this gunk and rust and everything else cleaned off. But I don't want to stop and do that now. Let's go ahead and get the rest of the, uh, the gearing out and uh, see, what, see what it looks like. So we've got a 22 millimeter down low. Now I've got an adapter up top. Let's see if we can break that bolt loose. All right, there she is. What we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab up the set of vice grips at a non-surfaced area. I mean, in other words, there's no bearings or any type of uh, seals in that location. Let's see if we can uh, tap it a little bit and get it to release. There we go. Yeah, it was uh, <laughs> a little stuck down on those needle bearings. This is scary stuff here, guys. Everything in here is looking really nasty so far. I really can't evaluate it until I get it cleaned up. So let's finish breaking it down. Then I'll get everything cleaned up, spread it out on the table. And then we'll make a decision if we can reuse any of it or not. All right, so let's reach in and get that forward gear. Oh boy. Gee, I wonder why it was being tough to turn. So it's cleaned out reasonably well, but there are still two things that need to be pulled out. One is gonna be that needle bearing for the input shaft, and then there's the race for the bearing that's on the, the forward gear. Now, believe me, if you look through the Yamaha manual, it has two pages worth of special tools that you need to really 
extract and then reinstall all these bearings. Now, do I have access to all those? Well, yes, I do, but I'm betting that you don't. So what we're gonna do is show you the correct tool from Yamaha, and then I'm gonna show you a workaround that probably cost a, a quarter of what that uh, official Yamaha special tool will. So what I'm gonna be using to do this is, you've probably seen me use this before, it's made by Motion Pro, nice little driver set, aluminum, works really well for situations like this, and I'm using the 40 millimeter attachment, but the trick is the bearing's way down in there. So the way we're gonna do that to get it to knock out is that we're gonna go ahead and lower in our tool And because I bet you won't be doing this every day of your life, we're just going to use a piece of three quarter inch conduit and then drive it through. There it is. All right, guys, with that out of the way, we have two more left to pull. We need to get that race all the way at the front of the uh, lower unit housing. And to do that, we're going to use a slide hammer puller. There she comes. Now, the other piece that you're going to see are going to be the shims. It looks like there's two of them. Next, <laughs> we're challenged with getting the bearing off the forward gear. And the only way I know how to do this is to use a bearing separator combined with a press. So let's get it set up and get that thing pressed off of there. That should give us enough room. Let's see what she does. That's a satisfying sound. <laughs> the jury's still out on this one. There's a fair amount of rust on the gear itself. Once we get it cleaned up, I'll see if there's still some pitting, see if this is just surface. Then we'll make a decision as to whether or not we want to use this or not. Now we're taking a look at the prop shaft housing and I can tell you, just looking at the, uh, the, where the seals are supposed to be going in, I don't think this housing is usable. But I do want to go ahead and pull the gear off of it, so I want to show you how to do that. I may or may not use this gear as it has a fair amount of rust on it, but let's go to under the assumption that it can be used, and that means I've got to get it out of this housing. So let's get it pulled. And there's our biggest problem child. I mean, it's just about completely frozen up. So one more time, reach in with the bearing puller, pop that one out. Well, all right guys, there you go. The entire lower unit completely broken down. Now, depending on what you're having to do to yours, it would not make sense to do what I'm doing here. It would make much more financial sense just to replace the entire drive, because honestly, there's almost nothing that I'm gonna be able to reuse out of this entire lower unit. But the purpose of this video is to show you how to completely break one down and then rebuild it. I mean, if you're just having to replace your housing, okay. If you're just having to replace your bearings, yes, this is worth doing. It's the same procedure. So that being said, if you like what you see, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep up with the progress that I'm going to make on this lower unit and keep up with whatever I'm working on next. If you need parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at boats.net and we can get you taken care of. Have any questions or comments so far on this one? Why don't you leave them in the section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Listen, we just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Boats.net, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.